Okay, so today we will, uh, so I am going to outline this topic on jointly Gaussian random variables. So, because I have only about an hour and this is a very important and uh, fairly uh, detailed topic, so I will skip uh, proofs and such, I will only uh, give you an introduction, okay, and I will, and you can look up some material uh, if you want more details. So, you know the one dimensional Gaussian, so the PDF looks like this, right, looks like 1 over sigma square root of 2 pi e power minus x square by well x minus mu squared minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared, right. So, this is a Gaussian with mean mu and variance sigma squared. So now, so we want to discuss today uh, jointly Gaussian random variables or random Gaussian random vectors, okay. So we want to talk about uh, a random vector x1 through xn, okay. So this is nothing but a, these are all random variables and we want to talk about what it means to, what it means for a uh, vector of random variables to be a Gaussian random vector or a jointly Gaussian uh, random variables x1 through xn, okay. See one thing in particular uh, I want to say right away is that a random, a, Gau a random vector is not said to be a Gaussian random vector if each of the entries is Gaussian, okay. So if I tell you that x1 has some Gaussian density and x2 has some marginal Gaussian density and so on, it is not the case that this is considered a Gaussian random vector. A Gaussian random vector is much more than each of the entries being marginally Gaussian, okay. So in a jointly Gaussian vector, uh, in a Gaussian vector or jointly Gaussian random variables, each of these guys will have a marginal which is Gaussian, but that is not sufficient, okay. It is much more than that, okay. That is what we are going to uh, talk about today. Okay. So, in two dimensions, so bivariate so let us first talk about a bivariate Gaussian and then generalize to a multivariate Gaussian or a uh, Gaussian random vector. So, you say that x and y are bivariate Gaussian. So, x and y are some random variables which live in the same probability space omega fp. If the joint density fx comma y looks like this. So, it would be a standard bivariate, standard bivariate Gaussian if f x y of x y looks like 1 over 2 pi square root of 1 minus rho squared e power minus x square minus 2 rho x y plus y squared over twice. 1 minus rho square. So, this is the standard bivariate Gaussian density. Here rho is a parameter that lies in minus 1, 1. Okay.
So, in this, so what we can show is this, okay. So I will not show this proposition. So, first of all, you have to verify that this is indeed a valid PDF by showing that it integrates to 1, right. So, the standard trick of doing that is to complete squares, okay, the top. This is a standard trick to do that, right. Uh, so, this is indeed a valid PDF in two dimensions. Uh, which is easy to show then property a x and y are marginally distributed as n01 b rho of x y the correlation coefficients the correlation coefficient between x and y is equal to rho and c the conditional density of x given y is so this is normal with mean rho y and variance 1 minus rho square so we say that this x and y is a bivariate gaussian if this is your joint pdf so what we can show is if you integrate one variable out let's say you integrate y out you will get a standard gaussian in x and vice versa if you integrate with symmetric in x and y so if you integrate x out you will get a uh, standard gaussian in y okay and so indeed x and y are marginally distributed as n01 so x and y are standard gaussians marginally okay but they are not independent right so uh, we are saying that so if they are independent the uh, the density will simply look like the product of the two gaussian densities right in this case it's a more complicated form in fact you can show that this number rho is in fact the correlation coefficient between x and y and the way you do that is to ex explicitly compute expectation of xy right put uh, x y and integrate this out you will get rho okay which is the correlation coefficient between these uh, standard gaussians okay and uh, the the conditional density of x given y this you can compute using uh, just dividing this by the density the marginal density of y which is a standard gaussian okay from there you can conclude that the conditional density is also gaussian with mean rho y and variance 1 minus rho square okay these you can directly com compute from this expression so that is a very simple so this is the standard bivariate gaussian okay okay so one remarkable fact about this this bivariate gaussian or in general actually all multivariate gaussians this is true is that if you have uncorrelated random variables if x and y are uncorrelated then you know that rho is zero right correlation coefficient will be zero so if you put rho equal to zero here what happens you get 1 over 2 pi e to the minus x square plus y square over 2 right which looks like the product of the marginals so the moment you put rho equal to 0 it immediately implies that yes yeah, so it immediately implies that the random variables are independent correct so normally we know that independence implies the random variables are uncorrelated but the converse is certainly not true uncorrelated random variables are not necessarily independent however in the in the jointly gaussian world so if for 
if x and y are jointly Gaussian or which is the same as saying they are bivariate Gaussian, then uncorrelated jointly Gaussian random variables are independent. Okay. So, that is one remarkable property that comes out right from here. Okay. <coughs> Another interesting thing that you can lo look at this and figure out is that so if you want to compute something like okay let us if you want to compute the conditional expectation of x given y right. So, from here you can com compute the conditional expectation of x given y right because conditional expe ex expectation of x given y equal to little y is equal to rho little y right because so this is your conditional density so from here you can easily figure out that expectation of x given y equal to little y is nothing but the mean of this gaussian which is rho times little y right so this conditional expectation will be what rho times big y correct okay so this implies that if you have if, if all these x, so if x and y are jointly Gaussian or, or bivariate Gaussian, then expectation of x given y is a linear function of y. Okay. So in the signal processing, uh, people say that. So this is the MMSE estimate, right? And the MMSE estimate is a linear function, right? So linear estimate, so a linear estimate is optimal in the jointly Gaussian world. Okay, this is something that signal processing people use a lot. Okay, if x and y are jointly Gaussian, the MMSE estimate is a linear function of your observation. Y is what you observe, right? Okay, great. So that is just some. Uh, this is in the. This is just two dimensions. Um, so if you look at this density itself, so you have to plot this. So you have to plot this x y and you have to plot the density right. So, it will be some three dimensional curve right. So, if your rho is 0 if, if they are independent then you will have a nice symmetric bell curve in all directions right. You will have a nice uh, you just plot it in MATLAB it is very nice to see right. Uh, it will be symmetric in all directions no matter which way you cut it will look like a uh, n 0 1 okay. But if your rho is not 0. Um, the the distribution is a little skewed in one way right so what so if you plot this distribution right for some row value which is not equal to 0 and then you let's say you slice the pdf okay and you plot its uh, level sets as they are called right let's say if this is your pdf if this is your pdf in three dimensions you slice it at various levels and you plot it plot the level sets okay in that case you will get so, the level sets will look like this. Um, so, they are all 0 mean and so if rho is 0 of course, you will get these concentric circles right which means like the Gaussian is uh, symmetric in all directions independent case. If your rho is positive you get something that you get these concentric ellipses centered at the origin. I have drawn it poorly. So, this is centered at the origin and you get these concentric ellipses. So, the Gaussian will look uh, kind of sharp in this axis and quite spread out in that axis. Okay. So, the variance along this direction and this direction will both be equal to 1. Okay. So, this is for the case rho greater than 0. Okay, and for so which means rho is greater than zero means that if x is positive, y is more likely to be positive. Right, that's why the ellipses are like this, right? There's more mass along here than along here. Right, there's more mass along first and third quadrants than second and fourth quadrants. Similarly, if you have rho less than zero, you will have ellipses that look like that. You just plot it in MATLAB and see. The best way to see this is 
to actually generate this contour uh, well these surface plots in uh, MATLAB okay. okay. So, more generally if you want to talk about uh, a, 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 a non standard bivariate Gaussian the density will be even more messy okay. So, this is already messy even for a 0 mean univariate case right. Uh, so, I do not even know I should put if I should put it down it is it is a fairly messy expression ah, here, I, here, here I go let me put it down okay. So, so, so general bivariate Gaussian looks like this. looks like uh, f x y of x y equal to 1 over sigma 1 sigma 2 square root of 1 minus rho squared x minus half x minus mu 1 square over sigma 1 squared plus y minus mu 2 squared by sigma 2 squared minus 2 rho x minus mu 1 over sigma 1 y minus mu 2 over sigma 2 close bracket and close that bracket 2 rho ha, I think I got that right ok. So, it is a big big mess so it is a big mess to write it down explicitly right if you have so this this guy has mean of mu 1 comma mu 2 for x and y. So, expectation of x will be mu 1 expectation of uh, y will be mu 2 and rho as usual will be the the correlation coefficient and sigma 1 and sigma 2 the variance of variances of x x and y respectively ok. So, thankfully if you use a matrix matrix notation this becomes easier to notate ok. So, the same thing if you use the mat matrix notation so th this becomes like this. So, this whole guy this whole expression can be written as 1 over I think there is a 2 pi missing somewhere. Ah, so, there should be a 2 pi here one by 2 pi determinant of V e power minus x so vector x minus vector mu v inverse x minus mu uh, transpose over where so actually let me call this f x 1 x 2 ok x 1 x 2 of x 1 comma x 2. So, wherever this y let me write x 2 ok. So, here so my vector x is x 1 x 2 and my vector mu is mu 1 mu 2. Uh, this is square root here and v is sigma 1 squared sigma 2 squared so basically this will this will be of the form so this will be like 
So, this will be variance of x 1, variance of x 2 and this will have covariance of x 1, x 2 and covariance of x 1 and x 2 you can write in terms of rho and sigma 1 and sigma 2. Okay. You can actually you can just explicitly see that these two are equal. Okay. So, this this is the mean vector the vector of means expectation of x 1 expectation of x 2 and this is called the covariance matrix. So, it is nothing but the expectation of um, so x is a row vector is not it. So, it is the expectation of um, uh, x x x minus mu. So, x minus mu x minus mu transpose okay, which means you will write all the variances on the diagonals and uh, covariance of x 1 x 2 on on the off diagonals. Okay. So, generally what determines so uh, let us just so if you just look at a more general uh, joint Gaussian the center of these ellipses will be shifted to mu 1 comma mu 2 okay. and your variances will decide the spread of these ellipses in both axes. And what you can also show is that this these two axes right the major axis and minor axis of the ellipse are in fact the Eigen vectors of are determined by the Eigen vectors of this uh, covariance matrix. See, this covariance matrix can be easily shown to be uh, positive semi definite, positive definite in case it is actually non singular. Okay. So, if for a positive definite matrix, the Eigen values defined an orthonormal basis in the space, right. So, this these two orthonormal vectors define uh, the axis of the ellipse. Okay. So, where this is oriented is determined by the Eigen vectors of this matrix. Okay. And so, basically the multivariate Gaussian in the n dimensional case is defined exactly similarly. Okay. What you do is now it is exactly the same formula except now you will have a vector of n, n random variables and mean vector will be n long and the covariance matrix will have variance x 1, variance x 2, variance x n on the diagonals and all the correlation terms on off the off diagonals, covariance terms on off diagonals. Oh, by the way, so before I go to the n dimensional case, I want to, so I made a remark in the beginning that x, x, and y, x 1 and x 2 being both marginally Gaussian does not mean that x 1 x 2 is a bivariate Gaussian. Right? So, I just want to give a, an explicit example show that that is not the case. Okay. Uh, let us say here example. Let y 1 y 2 be i i d random variables distributed according to the p d f f y of y equal to square root of 2 over pi e power minus y square over 2 for y greater than or equal to 0 and 0 otherwise. Okay. So, this is how this so this is a PDF this you can actually show you clearly you can you can integrate this and see that this is a PDF and y 1 and y 2 are 
independent and identically distributed according to this PDF. So if you look at this PDF, what does this look like? It's a one side, it's like Gaussian with one side chopped off, right? It's, it looks like Fy looks like this. So it's as though the negative side of the Gaussian has been chopped off and all its mass has been put on the positive side. So actually what you are doing is taking a Gaussian and taking its absolute value. Right, that is what this random variable is. So this is Fy of little y versus y. Right? Let uh, so these two are IID. W uh, equal to plus 1 with probability half minus 1 with probability half b independent of y1 and y2. Okay. Define x1 equal to wy1 and x2 equal to wy2. So I am constructing an example here. Okay. So what will be the marginal density of x1? So for x1, I am generating y1 according to this distribution and then tossing a coin which will either come up heads or tails plus 1 or minus 1 with probability half. Right. So my x1 will be equal to the value of y1 with probability half or minus, one, minus y1 with probability half, correct. So, with, so my density of x1 will have a density, so you can show that the density of x1 is uh, with probability half it will have a density like that, with probability half it will have a density like that, right. So, you can show, I think this is right, I think I am not making any mistakes, tell me if I do, x1 is n01, okay and similarly x2 is also n01, same argument, okay. So both x1 and x2 are marginally standard Gaussian random variables, right? They are marginally both Gaussian. But the contention is that, but x1, x2 are not, is not a bivariate Gaussian, okay? In other words, they are not, not jointly Gaussian, okay? Uh, is not a bivariate Gaussian. Why is that? Hmm? No, x1. So I am looking at the vector x1 and x2, right? When so in order to show that something is a bivariate Gaussian, I need to show that it has a density of that form, right? V minus two rho x y what not, right? But clearly, x1 and x2 cannot possibly have a density of that bivariate form, bivariate Gaussian form. So if you notice. Huh, so the same w is feeding to the signs of x1 and x2. See, y1 and y2 are always positive, correct, always non-negative. And w decides the sign of these x's. But the same w feeds in here, right. So if my w is plus 1 here, it is also going to be plus 1 here. Which means if, my, if I look at my x1 and realize that it is positive, then I can immediately say that x2 is also positive, 
there is no way that x1 and x2 will have different signs in other so which means that if you just plot little x1 and little x2 the joint density of x1 and x2 is constrained to the first and third quadrants correct so looking at the so x1 alone is a standard gaussian x2 alone is a standard gaussian but the joint density is only constrained to the first quadrant and third quadrant by construction the density is zero here and here agreed in particular x and y x1 and x2 are certainly not independent right but and uh, the density is only constrained to the first and third quadrant which means you don't have a situation like this so if it were jointly gaussian then you will have contours like this right i mean there is non zero mass everywhere no matter what your row is you have non zero mass everywhere right so this cannot possibly be a bivariate gaussian it's equal to y both are gaussian same uh huh variable x equal to y then it will be a line right then yeah so then so that's a that's a case of a degenerate that's a degenerate case okay that's the case of rho equal to 1 actually that ha so they are perfectly correlated so all the mass is sitting on that line Jointly Gaussian. It's a degenerate case which qualifies. Okay, it's a degenerate case. So, so we will talk about uh, joint Gaussians in n dimensions also, where you will get situations where in n dimensions the density may exist in a subspace of k dimensions. So, in that case, you can just treat it as a k-dimensional Gaussian. So, in this case, yeah. So, that is what you do normally. Okay. So, is this clear? Is this example clear? this is very instructive because it says that bivariate gaussian is saying more than <coughs> saying that they are marginally gaussian okay so in the n dimensional multivariate case so we will define for n dimensions now so there are three equivalent definitions of a multivariate gaussian or a joint gaussian okay so my x is so column vector of n random variables x is said to be a multivariate gaussian or jointly gaussian x1 x xn are said to be jointly gaussian if it has pdf fx of x equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi to the n determinant of v <coughs> e power minus x minus mu transpose v inverse x minus mu divided by 2 where mu is a real vector and v is a positive definite matrix okay so we are just uh, putting down the same formula in the in n dimensions okay and of course so i have not yet into so from here so this is a pdf you can show this is a valid pdf by making some appropriate substitutions and integrating it out uh, what we can show is the is that mu is is the vector of expectations expected x1 expected x2 and so on and v is the 
covariance matrix. All the diagonal elements will be the variances and the off diagonal elements will be the, the, the covariance expected x i x j terms, okay, covariance x i x j terms. Okay. So, this is one definition which explicitly specifies the PDF. So, if, if you want to check if some vector is a joint Gaussian vector or multivariate Gaussian vector, you go and see if it has this form for some positive definite v and some vector mu. If it does not, it is not. If it does, it is. So, this is the most explicit specification of a multivariate Gaussian. However, uh, this is very messy to work with, right. Even in two dimensions, if you write this out, it was a tremendous mess, right. So, this is not very, I mean, it leads to tedious integrals and tedious computations, right. So, often there are there are equivalent definitions, there are actually two more equivalent definitions which are commonly used, uh, which I will also put down, okay. But the thing is, if I put down multiple definitions, you have to show that they are all equivalent, right. So, I am going to put down three definitions. So, I have to show how many implications, six implications altogether, right. So, I will not do that, but I am saying that you can do it, okay. Definition 2. first line is the same x is said to be a Gaussian vector if it can be expressed as x is equal to d w plus mu where w is a vector of i i d n 0 1 random variables. So, this is an equivalent definition you say that x is a multivariate Gaussian if it can be obtained by a affine transformation of a iid Gaussian vector. So, this w is something you can perfectly understand each of the entries is standard Gaussian and they are all independent. So, w 1, w 2, w n they are all iid n 0 1 random variables. You take that vector and perform this affine transformation on it d is some vector. So, d is, uh, is a matrix. So, for some matrix D. So, D is some matrix. Okay. So, it is some affine transformation of mu is a real vector, mu is in uh, Rn. Okay. You can show, so you can show that, I mean you can show the equivalence of these two definitions, okay. And in fact, you can show that d d, d transpose or d transpose, I think d d transpose will in fact be the covariance matrix, okay. Yeah, d d transpose is the covariance matrix V, mu will be the mean vector. And definition 3. So, definition 3 is probably the uh, most cryptic, but probably the most ele elegant also. So, x is said to be a huh? multivariate Gaussian if for every a vector a in R n a transpose x is a Gaussian random variable. Okay. 
So, this definition says that x is said to be a Gaussian random vector or a multiple multivariate uh, Gaussian if every linear combination of the x i's. So, a 1 this is nothing but a 1 x 1 plus a 2 x 2 so on a n x n if every linear combination of these x's is in fact Gaussian distributed. Okay. So, even if you find, find some vector a for which this is not Gaussian distributed then x is not a multivariate Gaussian. So, maybe perhaps you can find take it as an exercise in this case try to find some a 1 and a 2 for which a 1 x 1 plus a 2 x 2 does not have a Gaussian distribution. It is fairly easy I think because they have the same sign. So, you just have to figure out some a 1 and a 2 for which a 1 x 2 x 1 plus a 2 x 2 is not Gaussian distributed. So, I mean in particular ok. So, you can take a equal to 0 right and then you will get 0 right. So, you have to basically accept the 0 random variable as a as a very special case of a Gaussian with 0 mean and 0 variance ok. So, it is subject to that understanding this definition is fine ok. Great. So, these three definitions are in fact equivalent. Okay. It can be proven actually uh, the proof is uh, available in uh, so MIT course where uh, I think so lecture number 15 has a as a as this material ok lecture number 16 has a proof of the equivalence of all three definitions ok. Vector x should be Gaussian for this to, this to be multivariate Gaussian. Correct. With any other PDF we cannot make multivariate Gaussian right. No, see, so it is necessarily the case that see I can take a 1 as something positive or let us say a 1 as 1 and all the other a's are zeros. In which case there has to be Gaussian. So, this definition clearly says that x 1's are x i's are marginally Gaussian, but it says more than that right. Any other questions? So, these three definitions are equivalent. So, another I mean just like in the two dimensional case you can show that if the so this covariance matrix V as I said contains all the entries as uh, all the diagonal entries as variances and the uh, covariances on uh, or the off diagonals. So, this is a positive definite matrix in general and it is so it is eigenvectors which define a orthonormal basis for the space will again tell you the in which with which directions the Gaussian will spread out more on which direction the Gaussian is not is more compact in more is more compressed all right. So, this is an n dimension so we cannot draw it, but just the two dimensional analogy can be pushed pushed forward ok. Also uh, you can show that if the diagonal if the if the matrix V has a diagonal structure which means or the covariances are 0 then what you can show is that this will actually product out into. So, V inverse will simply be so, it will be like the sigma sigma 1 to the minus 2 sigma to the minus 2 and so on. So, if you expand this out you will actually get a product of the marginal PDFs. So, which again means that if you have a diagonal matrix for your covariance matrix that necessarily implies that the random variables are independent right. So, generally uncorrelated entries the entries in the in the Gaussian vector are uncorrelated then they are all independent which is generally not true only for Gaussian's vector is it true. So, even in this case I mean there are some results about see you can just like in the two dimensional case you can show 
that the conditional expectation is a linear function. Okay, so which means the MMSE estimate is is a linear function of your observation. So linear filtering is optimal, is what these signal processing people like to say, right? Uh, so linear filtering is optimal in the sense of MMSE for jointly Gaussian and invariables. Uh, so there is a couple of other um, cool facts maybe I should put down about these jointly Gaussians before I stop it. As you see, I am not spending too much detail on anything, I am just pointing out some interesting facts. So if you have, so if you have x is equal to x1 dot dot xn. Uh, let us say this is a multivariate, let us say this is a 0 mean multivariate Gaussian with covariance matrix V. Okay. So, I am just throwing out the means because means are just a headache, right? You can if they have if they have non negative non zero means just subtract it out. Okay, subtract the mean vector out. So, in this case, you can perform. So, these guys are so this x is. Uh, so, the idea is to, in some sense, uh, generate. So, th this x is given to you, all right. This is a multivariate Gaussian uh, vector with some covariance matrix. Okay. Now, we are going to generate uncorrelated or independent Gaussian random variables from here. Okay. So, this so the procedure is to is to do this you take x 1 w 1 equal to x 1. Okay. Then you take w 2 equal to, so you take x 2 and subtract out that. Okay. So, you know that this error, so this is the estimation error in estimating x 2 looking at just looking at x 1, you know that this is orthogonal to that guy, right. But they are Gaussian, they are joint Gaussians, therefore they are actually independent, not just uncorrelated, they are actually independent, right. And if you want to normalize it again, you can divide it by its variance or you know you can make it unit variance if you like, but I can proceed like this. Right, w3 I can write as x3 minus conditional expectation of x3 given x1 x2. So, I, I so here again I am projecting, so, so I am estimating x3 based on observing x1 and x2 and again this error will be orthogonal to the subspace spanned by x1 and x2 correct and so on right i can keep doing this so this is called this is known variously as gram schmidt procedure in uh, some people call this gram schmidt procedure uh, signal processing people call it whitening okay so it's called this is called whitening because uh, so i mean i guess this is from the noise literature right so you have this uh, so you have this colored variable so to speak it has all these correlations and then you have these w's are uncorrelated and you can you can make it unit variance if you like. So, it is like in all these dimensions it has equal components. So, it is called a whitening of this uh, this x i s. Okay. This procedure is called whitening and it is a causal procedure. right? So, I look at x 1 and x 2 and then decide my next w 3 and so on. right? And since see one thing you should know is that if you look at this guy this will be a linear function of x 1 and x 2 because conditional expectations are linear in whatever you observe correct. So, this whole operation can be written as a vector w equal to l times x okay, where l is a lower triangular matrix.
okay so you see what i mean so this will only be a this will be a linear function of x1 this will be a linear function of x1 and x2 and so on so you have only a set of linear linear operations and so w so you can write this as a matrix form w equal to lx and because of this structure you get a lower triangular matrix okay this is called whitening matrix okay so you can whiten this vectors uh whiten this vector and you can in fact show that covariance of the covariance matrix right covariance of x uh x x transpose or whatever so this was v isn't it can be written as l inverse inverse whitening filter times b times l inverse transpose or which is the same as where b is a diagonal this is a diagonal matrix so you can write this as l inverse b to the half b to the half uh l inverse transpose so this will also be a lower triangular matrix this will be an upper triangular matrix okay and so this is like a triangular square root of your covariance matrix okay so this is called uh, koleski factorization koleski decomposition anyway so that is about whitening which is again common in signal processing finally the one uh, another so i'll stop with one more little nugget about this uh, multivariate gaussians so you know that if you have just a, let's let's say any let's say a single single variate gaussian you know that the nth moment of the single variate gaussian is only a function of mu and sigma right it's completely specified by mu and sigma squared similarly if you have a gaussian vector x1 through xn all moments like expectation of x1 to the 4 x2 to the 13 whatever any moment of any order can be figured out by just looking at the mean vector and covariance matrix okay so so the theorem that says this is called wick's theorem okay so let's say that let's say x1 x2 dot 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 xn is a zero mean let's throw out the mean because it's just a headache zero mean multivariate gaussian then expectation of let's say i'm going to write little y1 little maybe i should write maybe not i should write uh maybe i should write expectation of y1 y2 yn equal to 0 for n odd and expectation of y1 y2 dot 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 y2 n so i'm looking at an even product that is given by some pi expectation of y i y j see this y so the reason i switched from x is to y i didn't do this as a mistake each of these y is could be any of the x's so in y1 you can put x13 y2 can again be x13 if you like okay y3 can be x1 right you can put it in any way you want see these y's are some x's okay so if you have an odd product because they are zero mean you will have zero okay and for the even case you will have all possible two way products of these covariance terms okay so this denotes all possible sums of 
these y i is taken two at a time. So, for example, if you want to compute, so for example, if you want to compute expectation of let us say, uh, let us say if you want to compute expectation of y 1, y 2, y 3, y 4, even with repetitions, y 1 could be x 1, y 3 could also be x 1, okay, even with repetition. So, this will simply be expectation of x 1, sorry, y 1, y 2, expectation of y 3, y 4 plus expectation of y 1, y 3, expectation of y 2, y 4 plus expectation of y 1, y 4 times expectation of uh, y 2, y 3, is that all? So, I have to take all possible, so I have 4 terms, I have to take all possible pairs okay, and then add this all up. Okay. And similarly, if I have, even for longer expressions you can do it, even if you have uh, x 1 to the x 1 squared, x 2 to the fourth, some x 3, x 3 to the sixth, right. You will have to expand the whole thing out in terms of the covariance, these are all covariance matrix entries, right. And each of these y's are some x i's. Okay. So, what this Wick's theorem says is if you are given the covariance matrix namely these entries, you can go ahead and compute any moment of these joint Gaussians. Okay. So, this is called Wick's theorem, sometimes it is also called Feynman diagram formula uh, because Feynman used it in, in some, some calculation in his quantum uh, field theory work. Okay. He did not invent it, right? it was much older than him, but he used it, so it is called Feynman diagram formula. So, that is another nice uh, nugget about this joint Gaussians. Yeah, so okay, that was my crash course on joint Gaussian random variables. What is even different? Huh? This n odd and n even. Yes. Uh, can we interpret with geometry on why it is 0 and why this is some number? So, no, hey, no, it is very simple. So, you have y1, y2, blah, 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 right. So, even if these are repeated, let, let us say I have y1, y2, y3. So, there is no way for me to take. So, even so if I have y1, y2, y3, so y1 and y2 could be the same or different, but one of them will always have to be different. So, the expectation will be 0, but in the even, even case, uh, this may be like y1 squared, y2 squared or x1 squared, x2 squared, in which case I have to write all the x1, x1, x2, x2, x1, x2, x1, x2, right? all these possibilities I have to exhaust, right. 